ladies and gentlemen, it is done. The story was finished. And we got through one of the greatest, most awesome WrestleManias of all time. It was, there was drama both nights. There was surprise results. There was returns. It had everything a wrestling fan could want. You know, if you didn't watch it, um, I implore you to go get a f uh, one month trial of Peacock. Go go watch WrestleMania back. But before you do that, stay here. I'll give you guys a quick recap of both nights. Now we do have a lot of matches, so I will try to go fairly quickly. You know, as much as I can while still covering the, each match. But uh, without further ado, let's get into it. This is the WrestleMania 40 review. All right, we had the night one opener, which was Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch for the women's world title. And this match was good, which you expect with two competitors at the caliber of Rhea and Becky. But there was, uh, there was uh, you know, reversals of finishers kicking out. Uh, there was a story of Becky trying to get uh, Rhea in a, in a disarmor, which is her submission move repeatedly. Rhea just trying to like beat the shit out of Becky. Um, again, moves down those a bunch of close falls, including, uh, you know, uh, each of them uh, reversing to her finishers. It was great action, and at the very end, Rhea hits her uh, finisher move, which is called Riptide, which is kind of just like picks the woman up from like from her back, flips her, slams her. Uh, Rhea hits Becky uh, with a Riptide into the corner like buckle of the ring, and then hits another one in the uh, middle of the ring for the one, two, three, end of wind. And I gave this an A. I thought it was a great opening match. It was, you know, two women, again, going all out to put on a show, and they did. Crowd was hot for Rhea in this. Not not so much for Becky, you know. I thought there, there was a little thought back there that, that they would do a, like a double turn. It didn't feel like it, but who knows? It could be done in like the month, weeks and months coming, so we'll see for that. But yeah, Rhea retains, gave this an A great match all right next we have the six pack tag ladder match for the undisputed WD tag team titles and when you put 12 dudes together with ladders chaos is going to happen chaos did happen and it was great you had people falling off ladders hitting each other with ladders you had people going through tables people diving here there everywhere if i went through the highlights we'd be here for our 20 minutes it was just uh fall after fall after fall after hit after hit after hit after hit thing about this match is it was for the undisputed tag team titles which is just the raw tag titles and smackdown tag titles together and both sets of titles were hanging above the ring and so theoretically one uh one team could win the raw titles and one team could win the smackdown titles and that's what happened. So the team of Eight Town Down Under, uh, which is Grayson Waller, Austin Theory, uh, went up and grabbed the SmackDown title. So they were the winners of those. And then there was uh, more action after that, including people just f like two people just falling from top of super tall ladders onto like the outside. Uh, people falling through more tables and all that stuff. The match ended when The Miz and Our Truth, known as Awesome Truth grab the raw tag team titles for that win which was a really cool moment for our truth who's been like a lovable comedic character and found he finally got his like wrestlemania big moment so yeah your winners for this match were awesome truth win the raw titles a town down under wins the smackdown titles and i gave this match 8a as well because it was just when you put like i said when you put a lot of people in a ladder match like this you expect chaos and bodies to fly and there was chaos and there were bodies flying plus we got a feel-good moment at the end of our truth so the match did what it needed to do i gave it a all right next we move to Rey mysterio and andrade versus santos escobar and dirty don mysterio this is where i well i don't, I don't think the match was bad i think this is where the night started to kind of cool for a second which it's expected when you're when you have a wrestling show especially a long one it's kind of go like that as far as energy of the matches just so you don't tire the fans out by the time the main event 
can't have matches go because the fans can't keep up. And by the time the man it comes out, oh, I'm so tired. Oh. But it kind of cool here. Um, Andre and Ray did hit the, like a stack splash. So like one got on top of one shoulders and they went. It was a lot of like lucha moves, lucha libre moves, all that stuff, including uh, Carlito and uh, Cruz del Toro of LWO sending Joaquin Wild flying like having him on the ropes and using him as a springboard he went flying unlike the other team's henchmen towards the end as Dom was going to get a chair to use which is very illegal in this match two giant masked white dudes came out of the crowd and, and uh helped set up uh Dom and Santos for a double 619 from Rey Mysterio with a splash. Two masked people were Philadelphia Eagle legends, Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, and the, your winners were Ray and Andrade. I get it was a B minus. I don't know, it's, me personally, it was the, the, I said the juice was kind of out of the match a little bit. Uh, I thought it could use about two, maybe like two less minutes. Overall, the action was good. It was cool seeing Jason Kelsey and uh, Lane Johnson. I gave it a B minus for the match. I thought the wrong team won. I think Santos and Dom should have gotten the win. They could use it more. Ray is Ray. He's fine. Andrade is he can get his like win. He can get his winner meant to back like that. Yeah, B minus. And your winners were Ray and Andrade. Next we have the uh, brother versus brother match. Jimmy versus Jay. And I'm just gonna say it, this one was a letdown. It, I was, besides the main event, I was probably looking forward to this one the most, just cause I knew Jimmy can wrestle, and Jay can wrestle, they're twins, they have so much chemistry. And it started off pretty good. We had a uh, Lil Wayne rapping a Millie and then accompanying Jay, accompanying Jay with his interest to the ring. And you know, Jimmy and Jay were trying to play up to like the, emotional part of the match but after that it's kind of it was slow they did have a point in the middle where jimmy was like fain you know asking for forgiveness like please no 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 and then kicks him and it was it was just too slow i mean they're both capable of having much more like run around energy into it and just it didn't connect and it, it was kind of went on before jay finally hit a uh uso splash for the win one two three i gave us a c it wasn't bad it was there this was a wrestlemania worthy match that was booked like it was on like a tv show like raw or smackdown it was just eh. like i said jay it gets the win i gave it a c and this one dis disappointed me i was looking forward to this one and this one was the one potentially the worst match of the weekend all right next we have damage control versus bianca belair naomi and jade cardio this match was good it was way faster paced i think having that stinker before it helped it but this match was basically a uh, a showcase for bianca belair naomi jade cardio damage control did get offense early and they whooped up on naomi for a bit but once bianca and jade got into the fray it was that's all she wrote. It, like I said, it was a showcase for them, which wasn't a bad thing. It was a sprint. It knew it was a sprint. And so it played into that. Um, but the match ended when uh, each of Team Bianca hit like their finishers and Jay Cargill pins Dakota Kai to get the win. So Team Bianca won. It got a B out of me. It popped, it, it popped me. It was, it was good. It was a showcase. And Jade Cargill gets her, fi her first official win uh in wwe so that was cool so a b for me uh we have gunther versus Sami Zayn for an intercontinental title damn it this is a match i wanted to hate so badly i thought it should have been chad gable i wasn't too much into sammy getting it that it made me grow um first of all sammy got incredible entrance uh it wasn't like you know we see wrestlemania entrances you see uh like pyro and uh a bunch of extra characters and all that kind of stuff or like cars and all that kind of stuff but no this was uh sammy was shown backstage talking to his wife and kids he told his wife you know let, let leave their son back there he doesn't want him to see this he was hyping himself up then he ran into chad gable who was like uh you know you got this you can do this by yourself and then he's walking up the ramp psyching himself up getting ready to go through the curtain to come out to the actual uh, people 
and then his best friend Kevin Owens was there hyping him up one last time which was really cool to see him like get uh, get out of his head and get ready to fight but yeah this match Gunther started out by chopping the shit out of Sammy uh, and ma they both made each other's chest red early it seems like Gunther using his power to beat down Sammy beat down Sammy and Gunther's like hubris and his uh, over overzealous ego got the best of him because there was a point where Sammy just couldn't move and Gunther could have gone for the pin at any time he didn't and then Sammy started coming back um, he hit a brain buster which he sets him up for like um, a suplex on top rope instead of like falling back onto the mat he like twists so like the person's head hits the, uh, the top turnbuckle like I said a brain buster he hit that and then he hit two haluva kicks which is a turnbuckle to turnbuckle diagonally big boot for the one two three and your new champ to end the 666 day reign of Gunther is Sami Zayn I get this match at A I was pissed I gave an A <laughs> it's like I, I wasn't the biggest fan of going into it but damn did it win me over all right we have the night one main event between Roman Reigns and The Rock versus Cody Rose and Seth Rollins and if Seth and Cody were to win this match then the bloodline is barred from Roman and Cody's uh, title fight for night two which is the main event if Rock and Roman win then the night two main event for Cody Roman is contested under bloodline rules which basically means anything goes and this match felt like a main event it featured uh Cody, who <laughs> didn't use as much pyro like or fireworks as one would expect for WrestleMania, but you know I, I think he was saving his budget for night two. Seth came out in flamboyant Liberace parasite outfit. Don't know. Romo's was kind of tame, and like The Rock's entrance was like a final boss of a video game with a flaming Brahma bull, which is like his like iconic tattoo he used to have. It was that was a uh, quick note, I did see a Wawa for Life sign in the crowd, and I agree. I miss them dearly. Wawa, please come to Texas. So um, the match started with uh, like all four of them staring at each other for like five to ten minutes, just soaking it in, which is like a, how a match like this should start. It was slow paced, letting the crowd you know, build for this. This is way, very much a storytelling over wrestling match, and the actions spilled out pretty early to which like the referee started counting and the rock like pointed at the referee said if you if you count out like if you count out the match i will fire you you don't fuck with the final boss like that so ref's like Shit. and they were fighting to the crowd including rock like throwing uh trash cans hitting people with water all that kind of stuff came back into the into the ring and a story that came in this match was reigns injured Rollins' knee and that was a very much a target for the match you know Rollins had a messed up knee and the rock and roman just beating beating down the knee and it was like just back and forth counter after counter after counter Roll, Rollins hit a stomp on the rock which the rock took a lot more bumps than i i thought he would i give him credit I kind of thought he'd be, he'd be waiting on the uh, side, Roman do all the work, and he comes in for the win. But no, Rock sold his ass off for this. I'll give him credit. Uh, again, match breaks down more. Uh, to And a funny point where uh, Roman's going for a spear on Cody, and The Rock was standing behind Cody. Seth pushes Cody out of the way. Roman accidentally spears The Rock. And that face and that yell that The Rock made was hilarious. And after that, Rollins Rose hits double pedigrees for a two. Cody hits the rock bottom through the announcer's table on the rock. Oh, Roman Spears Rollins through the term, uh, the not term, but, um, barricade. And then towards the end of the match, breaking uh, down the ending. As Cody was doing this super finisher, which is like the three crossroads back to back, where he just takes the pin and go, wee. Uh, he was doing one two and on the third one rock took his weight belt that said mama Rhodes, hit cody in the back of it 
Roman hits a spear, and then R Roman tags in a rock. The rock hits the people's elbow for the win. And so the winners of the night one main event were Roman Reigns and The Rock. You get as much A plus because it was it was the carny overbooking between these four that we wanted, that we were expecting, that we needed. It hit every uh, check check mark and then more. So yeah, Roman and Rock end the night victorious, which means night two main event will be contested under bloodline rules. Overall, night one I gave it a. I'll say B plus. I do think the highlights, the highs of the highlights overshadowed the low, the low points. Like I said, it hurt that Jimmy J was like potentially the worst match on this entire weekend. The ladder match was great. I don't think I get, you know, it's Philadelphia. So you put Jason Kelsey Lane Johnson in there. I didn't, I don't love that spot. I thought Santos and Dom, a win would have meant more, but so I'm not booking a damn thing. Uh, Guthrie and Zane won me over. It surprised the hell out of me as far as being that good. But yeah, I gave it, I gave night one a B plus. That sounds about right. MVP of it, I give to Sami Zayn. He had the crowd behind him. He was the emotional uh, favorite. Not the whole time through the match. I think there were still pe people towards the beginning that were, weren't happy that he was in the match, but at the end, everyone was cheering for him. And the match of the night, I'm torn between the ladder match and the main event, but I think I'll give it to the ladder match because it was, tw like I said, six teams, 12 guys, all vying to uh, get the titles. And they went, they put each other through hell to get it. I do feel like each person got just, even for a couple minutes, a chance to like show up and shine in that, which is hard to do for that many people. So, and I, I just, I just love like action like that. So yeah, the match of the night was the six pack ladder match for me. Hold on folks, we are not done. We still have a whole other night to go. So let's get on with night two, which the usually every show, especially WrestleMania starts with like a video package, highlighting what's going to happen at night. And this one was Dreams and Nightmares by Meek Mill. So thank you, uh, Hunter, for that. But uh, night two, the first match was Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre for a world heavyweight title. And Drew came out with the full Scottish entrance, like bagpipes and people in kilts and face paint and sword and all that. Seth got a, they said what it was, I completely forgot. But I, it looked like damn Mardi Gras entrance and this match was a story about Seth's knee being injured from the night before in the main event and this was this mat this match was just a, a, a finisher fest basically a finisher in wrestling is like that the move that a wrestler hits to win it also had CM Punk on uh, commentary who has beef with both people involved especially Drew so but this match was just a finisher fest it was uh Drew kept hitting Claymore, Seth was hitting stomps and pedigrees and all that, all that stuff. Uh, towards, the, towards the end, uh, Drew, in typical player hating of, of the year fashion, looks at CM Punk and tries it for his finisher, which is to go to sleep. Seth uh, counters that and then Drew hits a Claymore from all that to for a two. Drew hits a Claymore for a two count and then Drew hits another Claymore for the three and the win your new world heavyweight champion is Drew McIntyre. I gave this a B. I'll go B plus. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go B plus. I didn't mind a finisher fest. I think it could have had a couple more minutes of building to that. I feel like they kind of just, not hitting them, but just like spamming the shit out of them. They could have built up to that a couple more minutes. This match was more about Drew looking good. I thought Seth could, you know, he was injured for the night before he could have looked a little better given how long his reign was, but I know it's nitpicking it, but it's just how I felt. I gave it a B plus. And after the match, Drew was taking in the moment. He was, you know, celebrating in front of fans because that was the whole story. When Drew won his first two titles, it was during the pandemic era. So he uh, <laughs> didn't, didn't really get to celebrate in front of anybody, but he celebrates and he looks at uh, CM Punk 
and starts you know, talking sh shit to him. Punk's like, we worry about me before go celebrate. Bush started coming to shove and Punk and Drew fight and Punk lays out Drew with like, cause CM Punk has a torn tricep, I think it's some of the arm. So he has like a, like some little mechanical thing that like it keeps the arm in place or something like that. He hit Drew with that, started beating his ass and down the ramp comes the money in the bank holder, Damian Priest. Damien gets Drew in the ring, hits the South of Heaven, which is like a sit down choke slam for the one, two, three. And your new world heavyweight champion is Damien Priest. For that, I gave it a A plus 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 plus. Four plus, yes. Um, it was great. The uh the ego ego, the hating of Drew cost him in the end. Like, had he celebrated and walked away, he would have walked out WrestleMania champion. But nope, he had to get in Punk's face. Punk hit him. Damien took advantage. And Damien went from people were, were calling for him just to drop the, the money at Bank Briefcase to successfully cashing in at WrestleMania. A move, by the way, that Seth Rollins did first. So, that whole end part was great. So I, I give it a four pluses. Awesome way to start tonight. Next we had the Pride, which is Bobby Lashley and Street Pop, uh, Profits against Final Testament in a Philly street fight. They had Snoop Dogg on, on commentary, which him and people like us, the commentary styles like Snoop Dogg and Booker T are not everyone's flavor, and I get it. I enjoyed it. They had a special guest referee, Bubba Ray Dudley, because of his ties to extreme wrestling in field where it was in philadelphia and this match was good similar to jimmy J. It, it was a match that probably could have been on a smackdown it got uh cross and lash on the card so i'm not hating b fab and scarlet which are the two females in the pride and final Testament, respectively got involved started smacking the dudes with the uh weapons and then they took each other out in a table. Um, Bubba tells Bobby, and Bobby tells Montez, Montez tells Angelo to get the tables. And then Montez hits a frog splash on Karrion Cross. And Bobby Lashley gets the pin for the one, two, three. And standing tall was Bobby Lashley and Street Profits with a last shot of them, Snoop Dogg and Bubba Ray Dudley, like holding their hands up. I, was like, I gave it like a C plus. It, it was an excuse for this match was sponsored by Snoop Dogg's Gin and Juice, which is like cocktails. It was an excuse to get that and Bubba Ray on the card. So no harm, no foul. Wasn't the best match. I gave it a C plus. Next we have AJ Styles versus LA Knight. Yeah. Um, LA Knight came out first and I guess Slim Jim was doing some sort of giveaway for people in attendance. They gave away like a Slim Jim car which is not a bad looking car, but they gave it to some old lady. AJ came out to some new music, which I really, to be honest, I couldn't hear all that well. So I don't know if it was that good or not, but AJ is running down the ramp during his entrance and attacks LA Knight immediately. And this was like two guys who like portraying that they legitimately hate each other, just beating the whole holy hell out of each other. Um, LA Knight ripped the padding off the floor on the side. And they're like busting out moves to hurt, uh, uh, hurt each other, get get each other like, beat down to win. And it was like that. And then at, towards the end, uh, AJ Styles was going for his phenomenal forearm, which is a jumping springboard elbow to the face. And LA Knight countered that. He got him to the BFT, which is a he takes you. He, the face and just goes into the mat one two three your winner was la night and a b grade like this match wasn't overly spectacular but it was what it needed to be it was two dudes who do not like each other just beating the piss out of each other so yeah and la night got the win hit wrestlemania debut wrestlemania win got to celebrate with the crowd so pretty good next we have uh logan Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens versus Randy Orton for the United States title. Logan's entrance was a truck, a big truck wrapped in prime, 
logo with a prime cannon shooting at and someone coming out in a prime bottle suit. Did I also mention that the, the ring for this event was sponsored by Prime? They didn't show Kevin Owens and, Sa and Sammy did the same thing Kevin did yester uh, yesterday. Whereas Kevin's about to walk out, Sammy's there and greets him, tells him to win it. Kevin comes out donning the uh, original colors, the original ECW in the area. And then Kevin gets a golf cart, uh, which was a callback to Friday Night Smackdown. Kevin takes a golf cart and after that, Randy Orton comes out, gets a golf cart and tells Randy to hop on back. And says he'll give him a ride down to the ring. So Randy's like that and they're, they're zooming and they almost crash into the, uh, the ring. It was pretty funny. And so this match started out of like the friendship of Kevin and Randy just beating up on Logan the whole time. It was beat, they beat him up, beat him up, beat him up. And as they get Logan down, they both go for like a pin at the same time, which they both, then they realize, oh, all right, now we gotta fight each other. So they do fight each other. K, uh, KO hits like a double cannonball. Logan hit like a, a really cool move where he hits like a swanton, which is like off the top rope, so onto Kevin Owens and then immediately rolls from like hitting to getting up and then hitting a standing splash on Orton for a two. Orton hit his like rope hung DDT on both of them. It was just big move after big move after big move. When Randy's going for a punt, which basically his back of his villain days, when he would just go to like, the other side of the ring, run up and just kick the person in the head while they're like in a prone position. The prime bottle that came out, Logan pulls Logan out and the face reveal for the prime bottle is I show speed. If you don't know, it's a popular streamer. He fucked up because Randy went and uh, got him and hit, hit RKO on the table for him, just laid him out. Match continues, big moves, breaks down, and then uh, KO goes for a pop up power bomb on, on Randy, who counters the RKO. Logan shows Randy out of the ring, hits a frog splash on, on Kevin Owens for the one, two, three. Your winner is Logan Paul retaining. I get this match an A. It was just three people who know how to wrestle and the uber athletic Logan just doing whatever he wanted to do. All three meshed well together. All three had fun. The I show speed, I show speed uh, part wasn't like over offensive or anything. It was what it was and it was great. Kudos all three involved. I gave it an A and Logan is still your US champ. Next we have Bailey versus EO Sky for the WWE Women's title. And Bailey has some sort of pharaoh like entrance with new music, a little raving feel to it. EO has some cool new graphics for her entrance. This match was good. It was two wrestlers wrestling, especially EO. EO is a very good wrestler. And she hit like counters and moonsaults and drop kicks and galore. Bailey is going for her move, which is similar to LA Knight's. Or it's called a rose plant instead of like standing and doing it it's more from like when they're in a prone position to get down like whip in here but uh bailey tries that and eo does like a handstand to counter that and it was just like counters and it was just a good wrestling match between two former friends At the end bailey hit uh eo with a flying elbow which is the elbow off top rope you can't get that and then her, her rose plant thing again for one, two, three. And Bailey is your new WWE Women's Champion. This gets an A. They played into the emotion of it, of like former friends, two people that started the group known as Damage Control and having to break up, fight each other and all that kind of stuff. They played into that. They let each woman shine in her own right. And Bailey gets the emotional title win. It was great all around. Gets an A for me. And next we have the main event of night two, Cody Rose versus Roman Reigns for the WWE title. Cody Rose got some sort of like, if it was an anime reference, I didn't get it. The graphics were all like battleground related, um, like a flag, like a American Nightmare flag burning all that stuff. He came out with like a skull and his wife at his side and Roman got a whole damn orchestra and choir for his entrance which was 
Oh, so good. So good. And the way they presented it, the way they carried themselves in it, the way they kind of let the tension rise, it was, it was like the biggest fight feel in a while. And this match, again, was contested our bloodline rules, which means anything goes. And it, you can see that early on when Cody and Roman were fighting and Cody like gets Roman away and then tries to pull out a table. Well, he does pull out a table, puts it in a ring. Roman's like, nah, bitch, hits him, puts the table back in. Then Roman takes a, uh, a kendo stick to uh, Cody. The fight breaks out into the crowd like last night. Cody uh, suplexes Roman on like a stand box thing out there. Roman's hitting counters to Cody's like moves. He hits a perfect plex, which if you don't know, there, there was a wrestler called Mr. Perfect. He hit like a hook Northern, Northern like suplex, which is a normal suplex, but you, you hook the leg, you keep the hook leg and go for a pin. Counter after counter, two, uh, near fall after near fall after near fall. Roman hits a power bomb on Cody through the announcer's table, gets him back in the ring, hits a Superman punch for a two. Roman tried for Cody's move, which is the crossroads. He got two on that. Cody tried to spear and got two. This brings out Jimmy Uso, who comes out and kicks Cody. Jay comes out to even the odds. Jay fights Jimmy up the ramp and like off the ramp to the side. Jay spears Jimmy through the uh, like two tables on the side, which look kind of painful. Back in the ring, Rum Roman spears Cody for a two. And then Cody, uh, two count. And Cody spears Roman through a barricade. Solo comes out and Cody's hitting two crossroads, about to go for a, th a third one. And Solo's uh, hits a spike, which is taped up thumb, throat. He hits uh, Cody with that. And Solo like, drags Roman's body over Cody for a two count. And Solo and Roman hit a spike spear combo at the same time for a two count. John Cena comes out and uh, Cena sends Solo out of the ring, hits an AA on Roman. Um, Cena was fighting uh, Solo. Rock comes out with his music. Rock is Cena in the ring. Rock hits a rock bottom on the Cena. And then the Shield, if you don't know, Shield was a the main roster group debut for Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and at the time, Dean Ambrose. Now he's in AEW as John Moxley. That music plays, and the Rock's looking around like, oh, where's it, where's it coming from? Well, Roman sees it, and Roman takes out Rollins, who showed up in the shield gear to try to mess with him. And so the Rock's still standing there, and then you hear the dong, and the Undertaker comes out. And Taker uh, like appears behind the Rock, um, choke slams the Rock, and then the dong hits again, and Taker disappears. Which at first I didn't get, but it makes sense that Roman was the last loss that Taker took at WrestleMania when they fought in the WrestleMania 33 main event. So that makes sense. Roman has a chair and both Cody and Seth Rollins are getting up at the same time. And so Roman could have used a chair on Cody to like basically end the match, but he used a chair on Rollins, which is a huge callback to his shield days because Seth Rollins broke up the shield by hitting Roman in the back with a chair. So he, Roman couldn't let that go. He hit Rollins and then Cody got Roman hit three crossroads for the one, two, three. So your winner and new WWE champion ending the 1300 and some change day reign of Roman Reigns. It's the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. This match gets an A++ for me. It was the overbook, run in, family ties, um, legends, all that. It was everything it needed to be, everything we wanted it to be. It was awesome. It was great. It was emotional. I was like on my couch, like, ah. And like after the match, a bunch of like superstars that had to deal with the bloodline over the years came out and celebrated. Cody's mom came out, her husband, Cody's wife, Cody's sister, like the, his niece and nephews came out to celebrate and Triple H uh, came out to celebrate hugs him. Michael Cole, who was the lead announcer, was crying for this, celebrating. Just like on the announce table going off like, oh, the wrestling is beautiful. 
a damn near brought a tear to my eye. And the last shot is like Cody on the ramp, just holding the title, ushering a new era. Night two gets an A for me. Um, the only reason not A plus because I thought that the Philly Street fight, but it was so much better than night one. It was more complete than night one. We finally get Cody winning. We we get Bailey's win. We get the highs of highs were way 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 better bigger than lows were low and it was just oh it was a weekend of awesomeness will and should be remembered for a long long time but that's gonna do it for this mania review i hope you stuck around this long i know it's gonna be a longer video but uh if you could go ahead and like and subscribe it means the world to me let me know in the comments what you guys did you guys like this mania did anyone out there did anyone out there hate it and did you enjoy Cody Rhodes finally dethroning the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns? Let me know down below. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. I am Heartfelt. You can find me at, at It's Heartfelt on all socials. And talk to you later. Peace. Go Cody.